it's important to understand the meaning of the word heresy. The word heresy is directly derived from the Greek verb to choose. And heresy is not rejecting scripture totally. It is choosing how much of scripture you will believe. That is the nature of heresy. No heresy that rejected all scripture would ever deceive any Christian. What is deceptive are those presentations that claim to believe scripture but reject certain portions of it. And those are heresies. Now this scripture here speaks about heresies that are damnable. They bring damnation. They cost those who go in for them the salvation of their souls. These heresies are brought in privily and they brought it out in a very subtle way. It wasn't put in the form of direct denials of scripture, but rather in the form of questions. Questions such as, is it necessary to believe the virgin birth? Is it necessary to believe the deity of Jesus Christ? Is it necessary to believe the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ? You see, this has always been Satan's tactic from Genesis chapter 3 verse onwards. When he deceived Eve into believing his lie, he did not immediately present the lie. He began by asking the question, Yea, hath God said? In other words, is it really necessary to believe? When Eve entertained his question, then he followed up with the direct denial of what God had said. For he said, Ye shall not surely die. And God had said, Ye shall surely die. But he did not come out with the denial until he had first got Eve hooked with the question. And in my judgment of the situation, as soon as Eve began to entertain the serpent's question, she was as good as out of the garden already. Now it is precisely the same way that the devil operates in the Christian church today. He does not begin by direct denial of the fundamentals of the Christian faith. He begins by calling them in question. Is it necessary to believe? Do we really have to believe? But when we entertain his questions, we're just as surely out of the faith as Eve was out of the garden. They do it in a sneaky, underhand way. They don't stand up and tell you, now we're going to deny everything for which Christianity really stands, but they begin to appeal to your sense of intellectual honesty. Do you think, as an up-to-date man living in the 20th century, that we can really accept the old-fashioned viewpoint, and so on and so forth? Well, personally, I still believe the Lord Jesus knew what he was talking about. That's my personal conviction. I, if I had to choose between him and any modern professor of theology or psychiatrist, I'd go to Jesus for the truth. There was a bishop in the Anglican Church in England who wrote a book called Honest to God. The theme being that let's be honest about our doubts. We really don't believe these things. Let's stop pretending to believe them. Well, I was trained to believe in intellectual honesty and I respect intellectual honesty. But my criticism of such presentations is that they're only halfway honest. They're honest about their doubts and what they don't believe, but they're not honest about the results of denying these things. If you deny the virgin birth, if you deny the record of creation, if you deny the reality of hell's judgment, what does it make Jesus? Because there's no doubt whatever that Jesus believed and taught all those things. The only logical conclusion you can come to in relation to Jesus is this. Either he was deceived or he was a deceiver. And if we're going to be intellectually honest, let's go all the way with it. Let's come out with the full implications of our doubts. Let's be honest all the way. But to me, this half-baked intellectual honesty that's honest about doubts, but not honest about the conclusions from those doubts, is actually just exactly what's described here. It's privy, it's sneaky, it's underhand, it's deceptive. However, it says in the second verse that many shall follow their pernicious ways. They're going to deceive many people. And as a result of this, reproach will be brought upon the actual way of truth. Christianity will be uh, misrepresented in the eyes of the world through these false teachers. We've got to expect all this to happen, and it is happening. However, the very center of these heresies is found in that phrase, denying the Lord that bought them. And the essence of every damnable heresy is that it denies the Lord Jesus Christ and his redemptive work on the cross. And any teaching that touches or undermines or denies any of these aspects of Scripture's truth is a damnable heresy.